Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are in the in a wonderful week of the year when we're in between the last Sunday of the church year, the first Sunday in Advent. Had a wonderful discussion with uh, Pastor Tanetti in our first segment about uh, what we can look forward to this Sunday in the first Sunday of Advent, all the wonderful imagery and things in our readings and hymns. Um, but in, in our American culture, for those of our uh, listeners in the United States, uh, we also have this time of year um, with Thanksgiving tomorrow and then Black Friday and then um, a Small Business Saturday and then uh, hopefully you'll go to church on Sunday um, and then Cyber Monday, all of this um, shopping and consumerism and uh, stuff that we look forward to buying. And we're going to talk about um, how we conduct ourselves as Christians <laughs> during this this time of the year. Pastor Merritt Demsky joining me on the phone today, pastor of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Waterloo, Illinois. Uh, thanks for joining me, pastor. Well, it's good to be here again. So um, before we get into consumerism, <laughs> um, with this uh, season of Advent coming up, you have a little one at home. Uh, what are some of your favorite uh, Advent traditions with your little one? Yeah, well, she's she's going to be two in January, so we haven't had many traditions with her yet, but the things that we've done so far, uh, my wife and I do a lot of reading and love books and stuff. And so my wife really enjoys, I don't know how she enjoys it, but she enjoys wrapping 25 books so that every day of Advent, our daughter opens a book and we read that book about Christmas, about Jesus' birth and all that kind of stuff leading up to it. And then on Christmas morning, we have final book, which uh, all the other ones, it's just random, whatever one gets picked up. Some are new, some are old. Um, but then on Christmas morning, uh, Betty opens the, the final Christmas present that's the the book of the day, and it's called The First Christmas Present. And when she opens that, it's all about Jesus being born and the family kind of talking about that and putting the little main, the little Jesus in the manger and all that kind of stuff in the little nativity set. And so with the book, there's a little Jesus in a manger that we put in a nativity set that we have at the house. So that's something that we've typically done with her as a tradition so far, and she always enjoys that. I always tell my wife I'd offer to help wrap books, but I know my wrapping skills are far <laughs> under par for her desires. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a tradition that I've that I've uh, read from some of my other friends who have little kids too. That it's a wonderful thing to just open a book every day. Um, it's just it's fun. I think adults can do that too, though. I think that's totally cool. <laughs> well, and we we uh, we've done a little bit of that for ourselves, but last year was the first year we did the, the full 25 books. It's always the couple days after that's rough, because it's like, where's my present today? <laughs> no, we're all done with that. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of, of books and Advent um, and, I don't know, buying things, I guess, um, we're coming into this uh, season of American culture where it's all, all about um, things and what we can buy, what we can get, uh, what we want. Um, but the first day of all of this is is what's coming up tomorrow, Thanksgiving. Um, what is the place of Thanksgiving in the life of a Christian? What what should we be focused on tomorrow? Well, I, you know, it, 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 there was a, a segment on another podcast I listened to. It was talking about the history of um, of Thanksgiving and stuff, and talking about some of the debates within American culture of what place it has because. Thanksgiving generally has an object of giving thanks. And so I guess I hadn't realized before that there was some debates of how much of a national tradition it should be if it's a time of thanking God. You know, I was like, huh, I hadn't thought about that. I, I just thought about it as the, the memorial of Thanksgiving of being here and, you know, like that kind of thing in this country and all that. But um, as Christians, of course, we give thanks every day. There's a pastor I always love listening to that says thanks, giving thanks is like the first work of the Christian. We, we wake up in the morning and we thank God that we're awake. As we go to bed, we thank God for taking us through our day. So every day we are giving thanks. But on Thanksgiving, you've got this time of harvest and thanking God for the food and giving us everything that he's given us. Um, so many things that immediately start running through our minds 
from the catechism, you know, the, the first article talking about God providing everything, our food and clothing, shoes, drink, house, home, land, animals, everything that we have comes from God who has created us and continues to sustain us. But then we also think about contentment, the ninth and tenth commandment, thinking about not coveting and looking for everything else that has not been given to us, but giving thanks to God for everything that he has given to us, um, whether we are sitting around the table with family and friends or whether we are sitting in the midst of a difficult time. I know there's a couple of people in our congregation who have lost loved ones, and this is going to be a difficult Thanksgiving for them because they don't have that, and yet they can give thanks to God for the time that they had with their loved ones and all the ways that God has blessed them. And so sitting around that table, I I know that one of the traditional ways that people chuckle about Thanksgiving is awkward family conversations. <laughs> you know, like, and I've already seen some of those posts on Facebook of ways to help ignite the conversation around the dinner table, of course, with political questions or, you know, religious assertions, assertions you know. But um, ultimately, we gather together, we give thanks to God, and of course, we give thanks to God through Jesus Christ, who he has given so that we have eternal life and as we walk in peace because of what Christ has given to us by grace through faith, we get to thank God for everything else too. We get to thank him that we have family to sit around with, that we have this meal to consume. And we always just remember that Thanksgiving involves an object of giving thanks, which is something that really didn't strike me until yesterday. I was talking to a a foreign exchange student from South Korea and I asked if they had a Thanksgiving type of celebration. And he said yes, and it's also kind of tied to harvest time. And I was asking about religious landscape or who are you giving thanks to, you know, in your culture. And he was like, well, it depends on the household you're in and your religious traditions or if you're just kind of giving thanks to the abstraction that is the world, you know, for <laughs> providing things or if you're giving thanks to God for his providing so yeah yeah that's interesting um so we 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 give thanks to god tomorrow well every day hopefully but tomorrow um is Uh is that day for us to gather around with our family and friends and then um and then we turn around and and, uh, hit the stores (laughs) the next like four days um but you mentioned contentment how do we balance um our our call to be content with what God has given us and all of these sales that are going to be happening that are really lucrative. Yeah, I, you know, and I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong with a sale, and I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with uh, taking advantage of an opportunity to get something that you wouldn't usually be able to afford, but it has its place. Mm-hmm. And it is funny when you have people that are – saying, thank you, God, for everything that you've given. Now I'm going to trample three people Mm -hmm. and get to that toaster because it's $3 off today. You know, um, I think that uh, I think that there's a a wonderful opportunity to be good stewards of the gifts that God has given. And if there is something that uh, you'd like to get in your home and there's a way to buy it that's more affordable, then praise be to God. And yet we do so in a loving and caring way. We're not trampling people and cutting people in line and, and underhanded, mischievous. You know, it's just <laughs> we get there and we, we get there if we get there. And praise be to God if we're able to take advantage of the, the opportunities before us. But always remembering that um, if we don't, it's not um, it's not as though we're missing out on all of God's gifts. We have, like we were saying, that contentment. We're not just coveting and sitting there and desiring what everything we don't have. But at this time of year, there are things that throughout the year we say, you know what, we could use that in our home or this would be helpful or a blessing. And so awesome. There's a there's a little bit of a sale. So we can take advantage of that, but remembering its place and not uh, coveting, but being content and thanking God for all that he gives. Mm-hmm. Is there a way for us to, um, and I might be throwing this uh, this question out to you without any preparation, um, is there a way for us to uh, love our neighbors during this time um, in, in spite of or, or um, because of, of all of these opportunities um, in, in the next few days to, to gather with people or to, I don't know, offer alternative things to do over the next couple of days to love our neighbors um, through, through this time of the year? Yeah, I, I think there's tons of ways. I mean, there there may be people that you know who have needed something in their home or have been lacking something. And with these sales, it gives you an opportunity to get more than you'd usually be able to get in order to 
help someone else and to love someone else and provide something that they may need. Um, if you know people that don't have someone to spend Thanksgiving with, it's an awesome opportunity either to, to take a couple minutes to take them a meal or to sit down and eat a meal with them if the time allows or to invite them over to your home. Um, there's a couple of people, I'm in a congregation with two pastors, and even though we have our family things that go on, we also, we have a uh, Thanksgiving service tonight, and we have one tomorrow morning. And after that service, we've both got a couple of people that we like to check in on, and we want to go and visit them for a couple minutes and see how they're doing before we go and have other family events going on. So there are definitely ways that we can show love for people and care for people at this time of year. And I think the same um, all around this time of year, Thanksgiving and Christmas, both, there are tons of ways to not be self-centered, but actually focused on other people that we can be doing things for others rather than just expecting what we're going to get. You know, as kids, we're always like, man, I can't wait for Thanksgiving meal when I'm going to eat this and I'm going to eat this and I'm going to eat this. You know, That's actually an opportunity to say, Oh, well, maybe we can give someone else a reason to give thanks. We can share the love of Christ with people and, most importantly, tell people about Jesus. We can tell them about why we have a reason to give thanks because we often get just sidetracked by giving out meals or or doing social service projects. And yet the whole point of our Christian faith is to proclaim Christ. So at this time of year, we get to say, here's the biggest reason I give thanks. I'm, I'm, I know you're happy that you've got a turkey drumstick to eat right now, but here's why we have a real reason to give thanks, because Jesus Christ has given his life for us so that we have eternal life in him. And that's why I'm even here in the first place, because I want to show that love to you and let you know about that love and care he has shown to me by going to the cross for me, even when I didn't deserve it. And so it opens up an opportunity to share Christ with others in a wonderful way. Amen to that. Uh, well, we are just about out of time. Um, Pastor Demske, I hope you have a, a blessed Thanksgiving and a first Sunday in the season of Advent in the next few well, days. thank you very much. Um, and you too. Thanks for joining me on the coffee this morning. Coffee. coffee. I, I need some more coffee. Did thanks. you drink your coffee? Um, yeah. I, I have a little bit. <laughs> 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 thanks for joining me on the coffee hour, Pastor Demske. Yep. It was good to talk to you. Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.